a lot of accounts people are trying to have a look at variances, not just some variances, but virtually all the variances. It's only idle time that I'm not calculating. That was a nice, easy one. The formulas there, though, we just haven't got the information in the question. So, Soapbox was a very old exam paper. It's been reused and developed. I've actually added a few variances into it that worked in the original question, and the publishers have used it. It goes back about 10 or 11 years. So, we've got our basic figures. I don't want to dwell on those because we really want to get in the calculations. I've left some key numbers actually in the workings boxes rather than keep flicking between this sheet and a spreadsheet or having to minimise it. Uh, so our budgeted production, we originally were going to make 10,000 units, we made 11,000 and we've got 0.25 of a litre at £6 or £1.50 each, £15,000 total, the original budget. Uh, we won't bother with the plastic bottles, that would have worked out for materials as well. And in the direct labour, it's 100 every three hours. 0.03 of an hour, 0.33 pence basically uh, per bottle, and then variable overheads were 150, they've actually worked out at 200, and sometimes the confusion is between this rate, this rate, and the fixed overhead rates. And then our fixed overheads were budgeted 7,000, they came in at 7,500, uh, should have been 70 pence per unit or uh, the actual long number in, in the whole set, 23.33 uh, recurring. So here's our spreadsheet, so without further hesitation, we'll go through the basic ones, material and labour first. So our price, so our 2,800 litres should have cost us 16,800. That's £1,400, and we've spent a little bit less, so that's okay, that's favourable. And then our usage, we should have used 0.25 quarter of a litre each, 2750 so we've had to use a little bit more, so it will be adverse, and it's actually only 50 now, however, we must remember to times that 50 by the standard cost. And it's still adverse, of course. It's the fact that we've used more makes it adverse, not the cost. And reconcile it, of course, that should be fairly routine. We know it's 11,000 at £1.50, because we'd already worked out the £1.50. And I reckon that that's 1100 and it's 1100 favourable because it's actually cost a bit less in materials and if we just double check the favourable minus the adverse we've got 1100 so that's reconciled nicely so labour similar pattern actual hours the 350 hours times 11 pound and that is £525 and again it's favourable so we started off with a favourable so efficiency uh, we're going to follow the same pattern uh, as materials so the actual production so we can get the decimals right should have been 330 hours, we've actually spent 20 hours longer. So we've got cheaper labour, took a bit longer. But again, just like the usage, we've got to remember to times it by the standard rate. A step that's occasionally forgotten out. And then, well, uh, idle time we can't do, it's hours worked and hours paid, the difference at the standard rate. We just haven't got that detail in it, I'll have to make something up, but um, not much point for a simple calculation like that. And then we can reconcile it, so 11,000 should have cost us 3630. £305 and that's fable overall and just to prove it, it's the 525 minus 20, if I forgot to put in 
adversely but it's still favourable overall and that's fine because it adds up and reconciles so those are fairly routine ones that you should have learnt during budgeting or if you're just doing budgeting the others belong to MDCL so you will have to learn them um, very Variable overhead variances are more likely just to turn up as a question, as a, as a short calculation. They're less likely to come up than the others, and they don't normally appear in the operating statement questions, but there's always a first time, or it could come back, as it has been in the past. Um, the total one wasn't in the original question, so the total is based on units, whereas the others are uh, based on hours. So we, we're going to make the assumption for expenditure and efficiency uh, that variable overheads are based on labour hours. But we do know that at 11 down on uh, variable overhead should have been 165 which is 35 adverse and our expenditure is based on the actual hours worked what they should have cost or should have absorbed rather so it's actually not really the cost it's the the 175 and that is 25 and that's adverse and then efficiency it should have been 330 hours so it's 20 hours and we would worked out that 330 and then again the overhead or variable overhead recovery or absorption right the 20 times 0.5 which is 10 and I'm not going to bother well, showing you the calculations. 10 plus 25 equals 35. So what does this cause a problem? Or what do students start to get confused? Well, they get confused with the fixed overhead variances and the way that this total is calculated. And these are flexed. So the variable expenditure is flexed to the hours because it's about how much you've absorbed or not absorbed. Whereas the fixed overhead, the expenditure isn't fixed. But think variable is variable, fixed is fixed. So it makes sense to fix the variable. So absorption costing only for the volume efficiency and capacity. If it's marginal costing, you will just see the fixed overhead and efficiency and capacity are sub variances of volume. So on an absorption costing, you'll see expenditure and volume. But this one's nice and easy. We've got our actual and our budget of £500 and we spent £500 too much. This one's also easy. Budgeted units, 10,000. Actual, 1,000. And as we're in units, We need to times it by the unit absorption rate or the the seventy pence. So uh, seven hundred pounds, and this is good because we've made more units. Then our efficiency. So we've already worked out it should have been three hundred thirty hours. It took three fifty. So that's twenty. But now, of course, we're using uh, a different absorption rate so if anybody gets confused it's between this absorption rate of £23.33 per hour and the unit of 0 0.7 or one of the same one of the variable ones so formula here in other words I'm keeping the long number in my calculator but rounding it up on the screen anyway, I'm not rounding up, I'm just displaying it. So 467, and that one, um, it's actually bad, of course, because we spent too long and haven't been efficient. A capacity, though, so this one actually is nice and easy numbers, it's just 50 hours, and again, this week could be tempted to times it by the actual labour rate. But it's not. It's the overhead 
so fix that head absorption light recovery lights and that one's good well yes we've got an extra 50 hours out of our worker so that's got to be good and that's why it's deemed good so once we've done that one we can reconcile so that we'll do the simple reconcile but actually we may also have a backwards one where we're working out the capacity we've got the volume we've got the efficiency so we could work out the capacity or we've got the capacity and the volume so we can work out the efficiency uh, this one's nice and easy so okay so reconcile well we know that one's 700 that's the actual rate and actually these are is a favorable and adverse so if we do there's our 700 just to prove that the capacity and efficiency add up to the volume and that's all, all those done